live in Washington, D.C. This is day two of two days of coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. We're in person, face-to-face -face event. It's kicking off day two. Dave Levy's here, Vice President of U.S. Government, Nonprofit Healthcare Businesses for AWS Public Sector. Dave, great to see you again. Welcome great back. Great to see you, John. Glad so, great here. time. Last time we were in person, 2019, <laughs> it was like the event. Then last year was virtual. What's new? Well, uh, well, first of all, I think it's just exciting. I mean, they, it's, I'm excited to be back and in person and so much has happened in our, you know, in our personal lives and our communities. And so I'm really glad that we can all be together and it's been, it's been great so far. I was talking yesterday with some folks and I saw some people doing some networking. I heard someone, hey, I'm going to hire someone. So the face-to-face -face is back, but we're also streaming. Max Peterson told me they're pushing it everywhere on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, every, everywhere, uh, Twitch. So free content, but still a lot of registrations here in person. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, great registrations. We're thrilled with the support from partners and customers and, and also to, uh, like you said, the connections uh, that people are making. So it does feel good that uh, things are flowing and people are having conversations. And um, Well, you've got healthcare, nonprofits, U.S. government. Healthcare has been a big focus sure. so far, this show. A lot of action, local governments, governments and healthcare seem to be like pandemic enabled That's true. <laughs> to change. That's true. What's the update? What's the highlights so far for you? Well, I think the highlights are in those areas that, uh, you know, what we've been able to help our customers with is the ability to respond. And that's what cloud is all about. And their ability to react and to respond to things that they don't necessarily know is going to happen. And the big thing that none of us knew was going to happen was the pandemic. And so that ability and agility and preparedness to respond uh, has really been great to see from a lot of those customers. You know, Max Peterson had the CIO from the Air Force up on stage and you know, she's known for her comments about data. And yeah. data is our data, the US Air Force. And so data is a big part of it. They're having a transformation. What's the, uh, what's the how's that project going? What's the update there? What's your impression? Yeah, that? well, it was great to see um, the Air Force on stage and great to see Laura up there. And, uh, we're really proud to support the DOD and the Air Force. And, you know, the Air Force has a lot to be proud of in their transformation journey. And uh, what they're doing with Cloud One uh, is pretty, pretty substantial and amazing transformation for them. And then, the, the, you know, they've got 35 applications running on AWS. And so we think their progress is really good and we're, they're thinking the right way in terms of their yeah. software factories and, and other types of projects. What's interesting is it's watching like who's adopting. It's like you look at like the pandemic has really kind of opened up the view of the projects, what ones are doing well. And how do I say this politely? The projects that were being blocked or hidden or <laughs> the KPIs camouflaged into the value right. were exposed. Yeah. Because I mean, once that pulled back the curtain, people realized, oh my God, we're stuck or we're not, we're inadequate, we are antiquated, we need to change because now the pressure to deliver shifted to digital. Yep. I mean, this literally exposed the good, bad, and the ugly. It did, and some, some were more prepared than others. Uh, there are great examples. Uh, you know, we worked with the SBA to help uh, it, you know, expand the, the portal for uh, the payroll protection program to get more lenders access faster, and that was a great project. They were able to respond really quickly, and, and we were able to support them in that. Um, others, uh, not so much. I think it, you're right, it did expose that there's an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, there's an opportunity to accelerate some of the things that they were doing already in terms of digital transformation. Talk about the GovCloud and the federal customers that you have. What's the traction point? How is that going? Um, is there a new generation here? Yeah. GovCloud's been a great success. You know, GovCloud is our 10 year uh, anniversary. It's our 10 year anniversary, <laughs> so we're thrilled to celebrate that. I can't believe it's 2011. EC2 is 15. Yeah. <laughs> is S3 15? Oh, yes, 15 too, so is SQS. Yep. The original so, building blocks. So we've got a lot of great uh, success through GovCloud, and you know, GovCloud was really something that was born out of what customers wanted, uh, primarily federal customers, but we've also seen over the last few years real adoption from uh, regulated industry, mm -hmm. real adoption from partners that are going into GovCloud that really want to take advantage of the kind of security and compliance that federal customers need and, and the larger uh, defense industrial base organizations need. So uh, GovCloud's been uh, a fabulous success and I expect a lot, of, a lot of growth going forward. Yeah, is there a cultural shift 
in the, the federal government now. I mean, I can imagine some conversations have been exploring this. I did talk briefly about it with you know, Shannon Kellogg and, and sure. John Wood about how if you're under the age of 40 and you're working in the federal government, you got to be like, you know, why aren't we doing this? Like, there seems to be like a cultural shift. The younger generation coming in and be like, looking at the old old way and be like, why are we still doing that? Well, I think, I mean, you know, look, uh, bipartisan support for, uh, you know, digital transformation, for making sure that we have the competitive edge for generations and generations to come in the U.S., both in business and in, um, in defense and, and national security, I think is an imperative. I mean, nobody I've talked to disagrees <laughs> that we need to do this. And I think that younger workforce coming in behind, I'm jealous of the 40 year olds, I wish I was <laughs> under 40, but none of that workforce uh, really sees the obstacles that maybe uh, previous generations yeah, saw. These yeah. emerging technologies are, are becoming, um, you know, the basic unit of compute is getting smaller. Yeah. Uh, the cost to do these things is coming way down. And, um, you know, I think that younger workforce says, why aren't we doing this? Yeah, and then I think the Air Force um, um, projects are interesting too, because that kind of shows that it's not just about the CIA or the DOD, yeah. that you have, the, you know, these, they're leaning into production workloads and the mission critical workloads too. Um, the DOD is also now continuing to adopt. Sure. What else are you guys doing with the DOD? Well, you know, we're we're partnering with um, uh, GDIT on Mill Cloud, and that's going to give um, DOD mission owners access to a whole suite of AWS services. So we're really excited about that, and uh, those are available now. We're the only cloud provider that's uh, making that accessible to them on on Mill Cloud. And so this is going to open up the opportunity for them to start doing that mission work that you described. A, a good example of that are programs like ABMS, Air Force's um, Advanced Battle Management System. It's, it's really, it's part of their effort around JADC2. And a uh, great set of capabilities that they're delivering there. We're, we're happy to have participated. We did, uh, we did some t uh, testing and some um, show and tell, if you will, and, at Ramstein Air Force Base. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're really proud to support that effort and we're excited about what the Air Force is you doing. You know, I've always been impressed with the DOD when the tactical edge kind of concept came out. Yep. That was very impressive because they're really using the data properly and, and I know Amazon has uh, been doing well in this area because you've got things like Outpost, Wavelength, sure. Snowball, yep. new products. How, how, is, how is that edge piece developing? Do you see that um, becoming more critical now? It's absolutely critical. It's not becoming critical, it is critical. Is critical. And I think if you look at what the uh, DOD and, and all of their uh, partners are trying to accomplish, it's really moving all of that data around from the very edge um, in theater um, mm -hmm. back, uh, back home to where it needs to be analyzed, doing it fast, doing it secure, uh, being able to deliver on their missions and that's what uh, that's what this is all about. So we see huge, huge opportunities to really innovate around the yeah, edge. Yeah, the data equation really is fascinating to me. You know, just when you think about things like words, yeah. highly available versus high availability yeah. means something. Sure. Because you're going to want real time, not just on available data, you got to have it real time. So the pressure around these projects are high. And so technically you've got to have a little latency yeah. on all this stuff. That's true. That's true, you've got to either have near real-time or real-time availability, and at many, in many cases, uh, there's high stakes. Uh, so the ability for uh, the DOD to pull this off is really, uh, yeah. really important, and we're, and we're a big supporter of that. Dave, I want to get your perspective, because you know, you've been in the industry, you've seen the, the waves, we talked before camera about the 90s and data centers and stuff. 10 years of GovCloud, look at, look at public sector, just look at the 10 years, Yeah, interesting, Evolution. I mean, you couldn't give cloud away 15 years ago. I mean, like, you know, yeah. they were they weren't moving. Glacier speed of adoption now, massive adoption, uptakes there. The transformations are happening. Migrations are huge. Healthcare, which is like you know, silo the data, HIPAA compliance, you know, lock everything down. Everything's opening up. This is causing a lot of change. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction to that is I think customers um, are starting to connect what their outcomes are. You know, whether it's a business outcome or a mission outcome or both, to what cloud can actually do. And I think that's freeing them up to make decisions about enabling cloud in their environment, enabling experimentation. 
because that's what you want. You don't know what you're going to be faced with. We don't know what the threats are. We don't know uh, uh, if there's going to be another uh, major pandemic. We hope there's not, but we don't know. And what, if, if you set goals around your outcomes for mission and yeah. tie those, cloud becomes such an enabler for that. And I see, I see customers embracing that. Customers across the spectrum, nonprofit, um, yeah. healthcare providers, uh, um, you know, everybody, uh, Homeland Security, the VA, they're all thinking about what are the mission outcomes we're trying to drive. Yeah, what's interesting too on that is that, just to point out, is that the applications now aren't as complex to build relatively to the speed. Yes. In other words, you can get the time to value. So the pandemic showed people that if you were in the cloud and had that agility or optionality to be agile. Yep. You could write software, because software's the key in this. Yes. Not, you know, let's do the waterfall, 12 week assessment, 10 month rollout. Now people were doing it in 10 days, right? New applications. Sure, sure. Well, I, I tell customers a lot, uh, think about McDonald's during the, the pandemic and think about customers like that who had to uh, react to a new environment of delivery and uh, you know, fast food, fresh, and how quickly companies like that are able to roll out capabilities. And you know, you know, I don't know that federal customers will be able to do it in a, in a week or two weeks, but it's certainly possible. And um, it certainly will shorten that lead time that they have now in their software development. Well, great to see you, Dave. Is there any highlight customers you want to highlight, you want to talk about, get a plug in for? Yeah, a lot of great customers here representing today, and um, you know, we're really appreciative. Also, just want to say, it was really great to see Max uh, on stage for his first summit, and I uh, think uh, you know, it was great to see Laura and, and others as well, too. Uh, you know, we've got some great customers coming here. The Veterans Administration is, is going to, Veterans Affairs is going to be here, um, as well as the Navy uh, presenting on their, a lot of their capabilities today. So I'm really excited about yeah. that. A lot of action, education, healthcare, really booming, yeah. really changing yeah. and modernizing. Big wave. Migration, modernization, all kind of the big, big wave. Yeah. It is, yeah. Big things coming and, um, you know, some of these systems are ready. Some of these systems are 40 and 50 yeah. years old and, um, we're here to help these customers deliver on the agility and, and, and the extensibility of these systems to really serve citizens. What's your outlook stuff. for next year? What do you see next year or so happening? How do, how do you see everything unfolding? Obviously you mentioned the pandemic, we're still in it, uh, Delta virus, who knows what's going to happen next? The world stages changes, the global economy, got space, you know, I mean. Yeah. I, I see customers really leaning in and starting to see the benefits of moving their data to the cloud, number one, and then also too, getting the insights, you know, using uh, AI and ML uh, to really drive the insights that they need to make the decisions uh, on that data. And I see more and more customers doing that. There, you know, I did a, a panel this a panel this week, moderated a panel with some great customers around that. And um, you know, getting started is probably the biggest thing that yeah. I see. And, and we're going to have more and more customers getting yeah. started. Yeah, get in the cloud. Well, congratulations on Mill Cloud, by the way, too. Thank I mean, you. That was, good, that was a good call out. All right, thanks for coming on. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks, John. Okay, good to be here as always. coverage here at ABS Public Sector Summit, live in Washington, D.C., in person event, also hybrid. We're streaming out, we're doing remote interviews, and Amazon is streaming all the keynotes and key sessions for the digital folks out there. Thanks for watching.